Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. There is a secret battle going on with ideas about God, even Christians. Some of them don't have a biblical worldview. Well, we're going to introduce the author of this book, Dr. Jeff Myers, to talk about that. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and you're watching PIJN News. On this show, we normally like to report the news, discern the spirits, and pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. But today we have a celebrity academic. He is, if there is such a thing, right? <laughs> he is a published author of this brand new book, The Secret Battle of Ideas About God, our returning guest and my new friend, Dr. Jeff Myers with Summit Ministry. Hey, Jeff, ahead. welcome to the program. Yeah, thank you. I'm so glad you're here. You know, if, if our viewers remember, you were here uh, just a few weeks ago and we talked about Summit Ministries. Remind people what you do in Manitou Springs, Colorado. Yeah, well, you, you wanna go to summit.org to see more information, but we bring students together for 12 days at a time. In fact, we have three different campuses, one in Colorado, one in California, one in Tennessee. And during, the, during a 12-day program, 12-day course of study, so we introduce students to world-class experts in apologetics and worldviews and theology and economics and, and work with them through mentoring and lectures and so forth to help them develop a biblical worldview that can be the basis of lifelong leadership. So instead of, stu our, instead of taking an approach of fear toward the culture, oh, we need to avoid everything that's bad out there, our approach is, no, be bold, move into the culture, but do it with truth. And teenagers from all over America, age 16 up to 21, they come and they live for two weeks at your retreat headquarters, right. whether it's in Colorado or in Tennessee or in California, you have three different centers, usually during the summer, and these students learn how to have a biblical worldview. That's exactly right. So they'll, they'll come with their big questions. How do I know there is a God? How do I know that God is really good? That's a big question a lot of students wrestle with. It's not so much, is there a God, but is God good? I don't believe, I don't have a problem believing there's a God, but is he a good God? That's a big question students ask. What about hell? What about morality? Is, are there absolute truths? All of those kinds of questions students have today, they can bring the questions with them and without fear, they can meet key people who can help them grapple with the answers. The program's been available since 1962, before either one of us was born. So yeah. that program has a track record it's, it's the one thing in America where, wow, you absolutely want to send your child to Summit for two weeks Do you have before a, they go off to college. A, a general idea of how many students graduate the program every year? Well, we right now it's about 2,000 students a summer who come to the 12-day program, which means over the course, and it's been smaller in some years, but over the course of years, it's been probably about 40,000 students, and they have had a profound impact on American culture. So those ideas that they're battling with in the classroom during these two-week summer retreats, they're similar to the ideas you've written about in this book, The Secret Battle of Ideas About God. What, what do you mean, yeah, secret battle? Yeah, well, that's exactly the point of it, is that we wanted to bring Summit to churches, to adults who would never have the opportunity to come to one of these two-week programs. The, when I say there's a secret battle of ideas, what I mean is ideas are at the heart of all of reality. If you think about the most destructive wars in history, the war against Nazism, Japanese imperialism, Italian fascism, the war against communism, those wars were all wars of ideas. It wasn't, it wasn't just physical viruses in the world. It wasn't an earthquake that killed people. It wasn't tornadoes or hurricanes that killed people. And it's people. not all, always military either. It was, that's right. It starts with ideas. And then if somebody weaponizes the ideas, then millions and millions of people can die. R.J. Rummel in his book, Death by Government, said possibly up to 360 million people died in the 20th century alone at the hands of their own governments. So this is a battle where it, there aren't tanks, there aren't airplanes, there aren't ships, there's no shelling going on, but it's very much a battle because every day bad ideas come into our minds and hearts. And the unique thing about this book is it proposes that ideas are like viruses. Now, one of the things we found, we did a study with the Barna Research Group, and we found in the study that some 90 some percent of Christians agree with the statement, Jesus is the only way to God. Then we asked them, do you believe that 
any faith can lead to God. And some 70% said, yeah, I think so. So you, wait a minute, that's contradictory. If it is have, contradictory. If you have 90% yeah. say Jesus is the only way, but 70% say other ways are just as good as Jesus, then they believe both statements and they self-contradict. They contradict one another. So how can we explain that? So simple logic would say you can't hold both of those beliefs. If you just say, well, okay, here are the propositions you've advanced and here are the propositions you've advanced over here, you can't explain it. Yeah. But if ideas are like viruses, you can catch a lot of viruses. You can catch 10, 20,000 viruses all at the same time. Yeah. And then they can be dormant in your body and then pop out. Somebody asks you a question, virus pops out. You go through a really stressful time in your life, a virus pops out. That's how that works. So to th this, this book introduces the idea that bad ideas affect us so horribly because bad ideas are like viruses which gives us the opportunity when one of the segments to talk about what people do to stop bad viruses from killing everybody on the planet. And we can learn from, from that how we can stop bad ideas for ourselves and those we love. So this secret battle, and sometimes I disagree with myself, but this secret battle might be in my own mind or in your own mind or in somebody's mind where they're trying to sort out which ideas they, they agreed with and sometimes they disagree with themselves. I think so because we're all asking big life questions like, am I loved? Is there anybody who loves me for who I am and not just what I can do for them? Why do I hurt? I have pain in my life. Explain that to me. Why do I have pain? It doesn't make any sense. If God is good, why do I have pain? But That's a great place to take a break. When we come back from this, we're gonna ask Jeff, what is the source of pain and, and is there hope? giving you a megaphone in Washington, D.C. Dr. Chaps will be right back. Do you ever pray and sometimes you feel like your prayers are hitting the ceiling and they don't get to God or maybe you don't get the result that you hoped for? I'm Dr. Chaps and I want to make available to you a new resource, a four-part video Bible teaching series on how to pray effective prayers. Did you know God has given us instructions in the Bible? For example, in 1 Timothy 2, there are four different Greek words for four different kinds of prayers, supplication, petition, intercession, and thanksgiving. If you don't understand the way God teaches us to pray, then we cannot expect the result for which we hope. I'm asking you to get this important Bible video teaching series on DVD for a suggested donation of only $30. Call us right now at 866-Obey-God Again, that's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D, or visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org, and get this important video resource for your family. Call us right now. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org. Did you know religious freedom is under fire in our military today? Our troops do not have protection. For example, military chapels are now being desecrated by homosexual wedding ceremonies on bases in all 50 states. Our troops are now also face punishment if they dare to object to sharing common sleeping quarters or common shower facilities, or if chaplains dare to quote the Bible during private counseling that declares that homosexuality is a sin. Nobody in our military should be forced to violate their Christian conscience, especially their right to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Let's take action today for religious freedom. Would you sign a petition with me? Visit PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org. Let's defend religious freedom for our troops. Take action today. Dr. Chaps needs you to sign today's petition right now. Again, visit PrayInJesusName.org to sign our petition right now. He is the intersection of church and state. Here is Dr. Chaps. We often wonder whether there is any hope for the world today. Why do we have conflict? Does my life have any meaning? Good ideas enable us to flourish, but it often seems that bad ideas are winning the day. What people call love 
It's just a chemical reaction that compels animals to breed. So either I'm God or truth is relative. I've come to believe that most people fall prey to one of five idea viruses. Imagine the entire world being a secular place, not a sacred place. Darwin did that with the human person. We see karma in Hinduism, we see karma in Buddhism, simply the idea of cause and effect. Postmodernism has kind of indoctrinated people into believing that there are no objective moral norms. Socialism says we all own it. When we all own it, nobody owns it. When was the last time that you washed a rental car? Do you have the hope that you are confident of your salvation? And now I've never had a Muslim say to me, yes, I'm confident. A growing number of people wonder, not just if God exists, but whether the question of his existence even matters. In the busyness of life, it's easy to feel like God is absent. We find ourselves locked in mortal combat in a secret battle of ideas about God. Welcome back. I'm joined again by Dr. Jeff Myers, the author of this new book, In Stores Everywhere, we hope, uh, The Secret Battle of Ideas About God. Jeff, why did you write this book? And it's published, uh, David C. Cook. Mm -hmm. uh, talk about yeah, that. Yeah, I wrote it because I want people in churches to recognize there are bad ideas that, it, that cause us to feel miserable, that sicken our souls in the big life questions that everybody in the world asks. Am I loved? Why do I hurt? What is my purpose? Why can't we get along? And is there any hope for the world? Everybody in the world wants to have answers to those questions. Is there any hope for the world? I, the, the hope for the world is in, is in Jesus. Amen. But, the, but, the, but it's amazing how many different worldviews will try to deflect our attention away from that. Yeah. They'll say, well, only the material world exists, so Jesus is not real. Or they will say, only the spiritual world exists, so anything that goes wrong for you on this planet, don't worry about it, it's just an illusion. This None of this really exists. So it is, it's really a worldview battle. It's a battle of ideas and how we answer those big life questions, especially in questions like pain. I mean, we've talked about this, that, that it's not so much that people disbelieve that there's a God, it's they believe God is not good, or they question whether he's good, well, that's, because they've had hard times in their lives. I think that's one of the chapters in your book where you try yeah. to answer the question, how does a good God allow evil to exist? What, what do you right. say? Well, there are two ways we have to approach the question. First, we have to look at the alternative worldviews. People have said to me, well, doesn't Christianity have a problem of pain? And my answer is, every worldview has a problem of pain. It doesn't matter where you live on the planet. If you have pain, you've got to figure out why. So each worldview proposes its solution. Secularism says there's no point to any of this in life. As Richard Dawkins said, DNA just is and we dance to its music. There's no meaning to any of it. Marxism says we have pain because the rich oppress the poor. We are being oppressed. If we can overthrow our oppressor, we'll overcome our pain. Or Muslims might say it's the will of Allah. Uh, that's exactly right. It's so if you experience pain in Islam, Muslims will say it's because you've disobeyed God. Uh, what about a tiny baby? They've disobeyed God. That's it. There's no, there's no other possible, innocent. even if they're innocent, there's no other explanation. Wow. The fourth worldview, New Spirituality, says pain is just an illusion because the whole world is just an illusion. Postmodernism says, we don't think anybody has answers to this. We just despair that anybody has any truth at all. There really is no truth. They're always the skeptics. They're always the skeptics. They're skeptical about everything. Do you think the Bible's true? We're skeptical. Do you think there's a God? We're skeptical. Do you think any claims about anything are true? No, nah, we're skeptical. So each of these worldviews tries to grapple with pain but all of and those they fail. Are depressing. All five of those that you just described, I would be sad if I believed that way. I think a lot of people are really sad. What That's the, maybe why they want to, why they blame God. So, what is you, the hopeful worldview that, what is the biblical answer to that difficult Well, a biblical question? worldview is based on Jesus, that yeah. Jesus is the Son of God, that Jesus really did come to earth, he really did die on the cross, and he really did rise again from the dead. So, we don't live in a world of the, of death, we live in a world in which Jesus has conquered death. When the we talk about our resurrection world, we talk about sharing the gospel, and sometimes we think that means I've trusted Jesus as my savior, why don't you do the same thing? But it's so much bigger than that. The gospel is Jesus has won. He has destroyed evil's ability to destroy that about us that is most important, which is our eternal soul. So when you say we're sharing the gospel, what you're really doing is saying, we just get to go. We don't have to do anything except go out and tell people Jesus has won. That's the good news. And there's hope and there's healing. You may, you may be suffering from sickness or injustice, 
but there will be justice in the world and Jesus provides hope and healing and even resurrection to eternal life. I think that's that's right. And I've had a lot of painful things in my life and I know you have as well. And everybody who's watching, we've experienced pain. Jesus said, in this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. The word overcome is based on a Greek word from it's the, based on the Greek goddess Nike, who's the goddess of victory. Yeah. What Jesus has done in rising again from the dead is deprive evil of its ability to destroy our souls. So Jesus has overcome evil. That does not mean we don't experience pain, but Jesus has overcome it. And it's in that that we have hope. And it's such a hopeful message to know that God is always good. Even when your circumstances are bad, even when bad things are happening to you, God is always good. We're gonna take a short break. When we come back, we'll have more with Dr. Jeff Myers. Dr. Chaps will be right back with more PIJN News. Do you ever pray and sometimes you feel like your prayers are hitting the ceiling and they don't get to God or maybe you don't get the result that you hoped for? I'm Dr. Chaps and I wanna make available to you a new resource, a four part video Bible teaching series on how to pray effective prayers. Did you know God has given us instructions in the Bible? For example, in 1 Timothy 2, there are four different Greek words for four different kinds of prayers, supplication, petition, intercession, and thanksgiving. If you don't understand the way God teaches us to pray, then we cannot expect the result for which we hope. I'm asking you to get this important Bible video teaching series on DVD for a suggested donation of only $30. Call us right now at 866-ObeyGod Again, that's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D, or visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org, and get this important video resource for your family. Call us right now. Today, I wanna to invite you to sign an important petition to Congress to protect military chaplains, especially their right to pray publicly in Jesus' name. If you remember my story, you know that I was vindicated by Congress in 2006 after I took a principled stand for the right to pray in Jesus' name. But Congress never did pass a positive law to let chaplains pray according to their conscience. Would you sign that petition with me? Let's take action today. This is PIJN News. You know, people ask me, chaps, we're watching on this network. We've already set our DVR to record your shows, but our friends, don't have this network, or maybe they can't watch at this time. Did you know we are on demand on 10 different platforms? You can tell your friends to find this show, PIJN News, on their Roku box or their Amazon Fire box. Just look under the religion or news categories. Or maybe you have a smartphone or your friends or grandchildren can find us on Android TV, Google TV, Smart TV, or iTunes. Of course, we're always on the internet, Look for us on YouTube or Facebook or Twitter, or better yet, subscribe to our daily email alerts at PrayInJesusName.org. It's important that you share all of these available platforms with your friends so we can mobilize all of the body of Christ to pray the news and change the world. Would you join us? Visit PrayInJesusName.org to learn more. Stay tuned for the end of our show to learn how to partner with this ministry. Here's Dr. Chaps. Welcome back. Join for one last segment. Dr. Jeff Myers has written this book, The Secret Battle of Ideas About God. Here's a subtitle, Overcoming the Outbreak of Five Fatal Worldviews. And we're gonna put up this slide again. I think you, you had covered it in a previous show, but you did this survey with the Barna Research Group. Right. And, and some of these statistics were shocking to me. I wanna make sure that people understand them and how they tie to your book. Well, we, we wanted to know how many people have a biblical worldview. And it turns out of people who go to church who say their faith is very important to them, only 19% have a biblical worldview. So we're really missing something if only one in five people who go to church grasps what the Bible really says about what's important in life. Well, we then asked the question, well, what do people believe? If they don't believe the Christian worldview, what beliefs do hold them? And that was really important because, you know, a book like this, why would you even read a book like this if we really aren't affected by bad ideas? Yeah. But if we are affected by bad ideas, then it's really important. So here's what we found. 61% of church-going Christians are affected by ideas from the new spiritualist worldview. 
54% are affected by ideas from the postmodern worldview. 38% are sympathetic with some Islamic teachings, which is amazing to me. 36% accept ideas associated with Marxism, and 29% believe ideas based on secularism. So idea viruses sneak in. And, and it's, you can easily imagine how that would happen. The smallpox virus, for example, is so tiny that a million copies of the virus can fit inside the period at the end of a sentence. They're so small, they can come in through cracks in your skin, cuts that you don't even realize you have. Vi idea viruses are similar. They come into our minds and into our hearts and they convince us you are not loved. There is no healing for your hurt. There is no purpose to your life. There is no end to the conflict. There is no hope for peace and there's no hope for the world. The Christian worldview stands up and says, because of Jesus, because Jesus has won, all of those things get reversed and there is hope for the world. So I'd recommend the book to anybody who's interested in having some hope. Anybody who's wondering, am I really loved? Is there any answer for my pain? And, and people can go to secretbattlebook.com, do a couple things there. First, you can download a sample chapter of the book before you buy it to make sure you like it. Yep. And the second thing and is... And that's free, I assume. And that's free, yes. The second thing is you can take that worldview survey for yourself to see which ideas have begun to influence you. And don't be upset about it if you realize that you've been influenced by bad ideas. Well, so we all have been influenced by bad ideas. It's just, it's important to know what those bad ideas are and how they've led us astray so that we can stay focused on Jesus. Now, you're an academic, you have a PhD from University of Denver. Uh, there's also these important survey results at that website, are there not? That's right, yeah. You can see all the survey results there. It's about a 75 page report with all of the data. So I would say pastors, if you, if you go to a church, and I hope you do, then you can download the copy of this survey. It's done by the Barna Research Group, which is one of the most esteemed groups studying Christians today. George Barna is a world-class researcher, does all these scientific polling of what people believe. That's right, and he's, he's retired from that company, but the company still goes on and does exactly what they have always done with him. And you can download those results, print them out if you can, take them to your pastor and say, Pastor, I'm concerned, I want to help, what can we do? The Secret Battle of Ideas About God is not only a book, it's also a video course, and you can see a free session on the video, again, at secretbattlebook.com. That way you can see, you can look at it, hmm, I wonder if this would be good for our small group. I hope you would say yes. Is it good for our church? I yeah. hope you would say yes. So you can get a free copy, of the, a free chapter of the book. You can take the worldview survey to see how what kind of ideas you've been influenced by. You can see the academic research of how most of America, in fact, other Christians, what, the, what worldview they believe. Right. There's a lot of information here. At There's a lot of information, just secretbattlebook.com. It's a website built up that's to be, it's simple to navigate, but it gives you a lot of detailed information and a lot of solutions as well. We don't wanna just present problems. We want to show people there is hope and you can solve these problems in a way that can really change the world. We have just three minutes left. I want, I want your take again on, remind our viewers about what you do for teenagers. Let's say there's a mom out there saying, you know, I'm really worried about my 16 year old. Yeah. They're being influenced by their friends uh, or my 18 year old is about right. to go to college. They're gonna be influenced by this Marxist economics professor. They will. Why should they come to your retreat? Yeah, well, if, if students come to Summit and you can find out more at summit.org, just S-U-M-M-I-T dot org. You can get all the information you need about the program. Students come for 12 days. What changes their lives really is that we, we teach our students, we teach our staff the DNA of influence. We all wanna be influencers. We all influence the world whether we want to or not. We wanna be a positive influence. The DNA of influence, two strands, truth and relationship, always intertwining together. So we teach students biblical truth, truth about how that Bible relates to every issue of our day. We look at theology, philosophy, ethics, economics, history, politics, and so forth. And then we do that in a very relational context where our professors don't just give presentations from the lectern, they also sit in a rocking chair with students gathered around so they can ask any questions they want. Students meet other people who are wrestling with big questions and wanting to love Jesus. They have small groups, they have mentoring, and in the end, Students come away believing that not only do Christians have the truth, but they're good people who have an opportunity to bring good to the world. 
and these retreats are happening all summer long, two weeks at a time. Right. But you can also you can do them in three different locations. Where where do people? Three locations. Our main campus is in Colorado, near near Colorado Springs. Then we have a campus in Tennessee and one in California as well. So summit.org, you can see which one fits nearest you, what the dates are. I will tell you, we still have some seats left in our Colorado campus in the month of August. So if you've got a son or daughter and they aren't sure what they're going to be doing in the month of August, maybe that's providential. Maybe it's important for them to be able to come and spend two weeks with us. Jeff, would you lead our audience in a word of prayer? I will. Father, we know there is a battle of ideas that rages for, for us. We also claim Romans 12, chapter two, or verse, verse two, where we are told that we are to not be conformed to the ideas of our age, but we're to be transformed by the renewing of our minds so that we can understand what your will is. That's what we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Our guest has been Dr. Jeff Myers. He is the author of this book, The Secret Battle of Ideas About God, Overcoming the Outbreak of Five Fatal Worldviews. I am Chaplain Gordon James Klingishman. Our website is PrayInJesusName.org. We need your gifts and donations to stay on the air and expand this audience, bring you these newsmaking, world-changing interviews like we just did with Dr. Myers. Please donate when you visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org. If you need prayer today, we want you to pick up the phone and call us. Operators are standing by, dial 866-Obey-God. Again, that's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. God bless you in Jesus' name. We're out of time, but we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. We often wonder whether there is any hope for the world today. Why do we have conflict? Does my life have any meaning? Good ideas enable us to flourish, but it often seems that bad ideas are winning the day. What people call love is just a chemical reaction that compels animals to breed. So either I'm God or truth is relative. I've come to believe that most people fall prey to one of five idea viruses. Imagine the entire world being a secular place, not a sacred place. Darwin did that with the human person. We see karma in Hinduism, we see karma in Buddhism, simply the idea of cause and effect. Postmodernism has kind of indoctrinated people into believing that there are no objective moral norms. Socialism says we all own it. When we all own it, nobody owns it. When was the last time that you washed a rental car? Do you have the hope that you are confident of your salvation? And now I've never had a Muslim say to me, yes, I'm confident. A growing number of people wonder, not just if God exists, but whether the question of his existence even matters. In the busyness of life, it's easy to feel like God is absent. We find ourselves locked in mortal combat in a secret battle of ideas about God. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.